Yeah. So good evening, everyone. I really am delightful to have you all over here for another exciting and uh, informative session by our institute, OIAH, that is Orbit Institute of Applied Homeopathy. Many of you would have attended our previous certificate course. And today we are arranging one small webinar based on the uh, skin disorders and some knowledge about skin. Uh, and we will be having our speakers soon with us. So, but I would like to tell a few things about like what was the purpose of arranging this webinar. You all would have uh, seen and attended many webinars on various topics. Through uh, Orbit Institute, uh, we would like to tell about what is the role of homeopathy in skin. So we all uh, know that healthy skin is something which everyone longs for. So there is one quote which is very rightly said that healthy skin is a reflection of overall wellness. So if our skin is healthy, our overall wellness will be reflected. So the purpose of this is this session, what you will be hearing by our Dr. Satish. He is a very renowned doctor, which uh, you will get to know. And uh, by this session, we would like to tell, we would like to bridge the gap between various uh, uh, mindsets which we all have, like the skin problem can be cured only by external application or how best the internal medications would be helpful in treating skin diseases. All those things, plus many query, queries which you all might be having and carrying with you related to skin diseases will be dealt over here. So the purpose is to give you the best knowledge about skin, to give you the best knowledge about how homeopathy will be helpful and uh, what would be the major disorders and major things what we come across in skin. The different seasonal variations, various different diseases, though the time is short to tell everything about skin, but as an introduction, we would like to tell that whatever uh, various skin problems we come across would be dealt with during this session. So through this ses session, we would like to answer many of your queries and give you maximum knowledge about skin. Yes, Dr. Deepak. Yes, Dr. Sleepy. I think my introduction, you should start the session. Dr. Shanti Sivere is joining very soon. So first of all, good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Shanvi Yadav, Project Manager of Orbit Institute of Applied Homeopathy. I would like to welcome you all at today's webinar, that is Understanding Common Skin Diseases, that is organized by Orbit Institute of Applied Homeopathy. I would like to thank all our participants for showing such an immense response for this session. Also, I would like to introduce our principal head, that is Dr. Shilpi Arora. You all heard her. And she is a principal head who organizes our, all our webinars, all our sessions. All these sessions will be going under her guidance. So I would like to introduce some, provide some introduction of Dr. Shilpi Arora. She is a highly qualified and experienced homeopath. She completed her BHMS from one of the most reputed college in Lucknow, that is National Homeopathic Medical College. She completed her MD in alternative medicine from Kolkata, as well as her postgraduate diploma in hospital management from Symbiosis Pune. She was also appointed as a medical officer for three years in Dharadun. And there is much more to say about you, ma'am. Uh, I welcome you, ma'am. And uh... thank you, Dr. Shanvi, for such a detailed uh, introduction of mine. Really, thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm really obliged to be a part of OIH. All thanks to all the members and OIH family. Thank you, Dr. Shilpi. Uh, so next we move to our speakers, that is Dr. Deepak Sharma and Dr. Satish Tutoria. So as Dr. Deepak, uh, Dr. Satish will join us soon. Uh, I will- uh, uh, like... He is here. Dr. Shani, he already joined. Okay, okay, Dr. Satish has joined. Okay. Uh, so, good evening, Dr. Satish. Good evening, sir. 
डॉक्टर सतीश इज एम सी आई सर्टिफाइड डरमेटोलॉजिस्ट ही स्पेशलाइज इन डायग्नोसिस एंड ट्रीटिंग स्किन डिजीजेस लेप्रेसी सेक्शुअली ट्रांसमिटेड इन्फेक्शन कॉस्मेटिक रेचुविनेशन एंड एडवांस रिकन्स्ट्रक्टिव टेक्निक विद एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ ओवर फोर्टीन ईयर्स इन दिस फील्ड ही कम्पलीटेड इज एम बी बी एस फ्रॉम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंस बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन एंड एम डी इन डरमेटोलॉजी फ्रॉम द सेम इंस्टीट्यूट इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड सेवन He also has been uh, associated with many associations like American Academy of Dermatology, European Academy of Dermatology, Indian Association of Dermatologists, Dermatologists, and Laparologists, Cosmetic and Dermatology Society of India, Association of Cutaneous Surgery of India, Pigmented Disorder of Society. Uh, I would like to welcome you, sir, and thank you so much for accepting our proposal and giving your valuable time for this session. We really are pleased to have you here. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you very much. I think some uh, disturbance is going on on my computer, so sorry for that. I'm not able to share the screen. So. Ah, uh, Dr. Deepak, your mic is. Ah, uh, you are. Dr. Satish, I have please uh, share it again. I just allow to share your screen. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Uh, share screen. <clears throat> Just a minute. No worries. Dr. Shilpi, till now, uh, there is one question in the chat box that is asked by Dr. Zamil. Can you address it? Sure, I'll just look. Ah, uh, just a moment. No shame. There is no question. There is a quote written on skin. Skin is a mirror of the economy. I think no one wants to ask any question. As a, no. So till now, um, I want to ask a question to our faculty member or to all the doctors. as i am very junior here and i thought that there are so many senior doctor and it's an great opportunity to ask this question and the question is uh, is skin disease for an homeopath are most difficult to cure or most easiest to cure anyone uh, in the participants or in our faculty member can want to address this this is my question basically see i believe that uh, skin is an outward reflection of what's happening inside so if it's a uh, 
thing which's happening inside and if we get some good uh, skin uh, symptoms then it would be easy for us to guide in deciding for the medicines so i feel having any kind of skin problem would be uh, better to help in choosing the medicine so from a homeopathic point of view i think this uh symptoms would be very very beneficial and very important so it makes this uh, is much more clear and much more transparent and this is a question ma'am this is not the quotation that said by dr mohammad zabil ah so next one will be and dr shadish is ready yes Welcome, Dr. Satish. Please go ahead with your session. We all are waiting. हेलो यस डॉक्टर सुरेश आई एम ऑडिबल टू यू यस ओके या सॉरी फॉर योर इनकन्वीनियंस सो टुडे इज आवर टॉपिक इज लेट मी स्टार्ट ना द टॉपिक Yes, Today yes, our topic yes. is understanding of common skin diseases, right? So, thanks for your, uh, the introduction. Before starting the common skin diseases and the understanding of common skin diseases, huh? let me give you a brief idea of our skin anatomy. As you all are aware, like. skin is divided into three parts like the epidermis dermis and the subcutaneous tissues and there are various structures like hairs and sweat glands and all kinds so this is basic now we come to the type of infection there there can be a various kind of infection in the skin today we are going to cover mainly the skin we are not touching the hair and the nails diseases so mainly we will cover the skin diseases so there there as i told you like there can be a various kind of skin diseases uh, that can be divided into bacterial fungal viral mainly so let's start with the bacterial infection so in bacterial infection there can be pyoderma which looks like a this so i'm uh Doctor Dipti, can you able to see those pictures too, sir? You are able yes, to sir. see the pictures. Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> the pyoderma look like this. See, in skin, na, the it's a mainly a clinical diagnosis. Means with the pictures, we can make a diagnosis. So particular disease looks like uh, in a particular shape or particular form. So it can be easily diagnosed. like with the picture only you can assess like oh this is this this is this this can be so we can differentiate with the different clinical presentation so pyoderma looks like this this is a bacteria these all are bacterial infection the only thing is it depend on the severity of the infection the terms can be a various types like pyoderma looks like this a boil fol folliculitis looks like this carbon cells look like this and if it is a severe and deep seated infection then we call it cellulitis so uh, one of the most important problem in a dermatology is like acne so acne i'll try to cover in a detail so let me let start with the acne types there are various kind of acne clinically which we can categorize like acne vulgaris acne rugosa acne 
back acne, steroid acne, nodular cystic acne, and comedonal acne. Again, the nodular cystic acne, they are severe grade. And uh, acne, along with the rosacea, they look like this butterfly rashes. So this is, we call it acne rosacea. Now, this, as I already told you, uh, the acne pathology. In acne pathology, this is just like there's an accumulation of shared keratin in sebum, and then that creates little inflammation, and that inflammation can lead to the surrounding skin infection and can lead to the uh, pimples or the acne, we call it. Now, what are the factors responsible for the growth of acne? This can be presence of hormones, means the hormonal changes can lead to the uh, acne. Severe gland overactivity, presence of T-acne, bacteria in the hair follicle. This bacteria thrives on the skin oil and breaks into free fatty acids, causing inflammation, and that can lead to the acne. Plugging of hair follicle by abnormal epidermal proliferation. Now we come to the next most common skin infection, which is fungal infection. Like nowadays, we are encountering lots of TD infection because uh, in our allopathy, now the fungus, they are getting a resistance to most of the other lentifungal. So, and uh, people are coming with the steroid abuse and they are coming with a huge, uh, I can say the extensive tinea infections. So nowadays, the dose which we were given uh, past, uh, we have to give the double the dose for the same response. So there are various kinds of fungal infection can be there, like tinea cruzis, tinea paris. It depends on the site. According to the site, we can divide the fungal infection in various kinds. Like if growing, if the tinea cruis, if feet are there, then tinea pedis, tinea capitis for the scalp, tinea corpus for the body, and tinea versicolor. If it's in the nail, we call it onychomycosis. The condition most often occurs when people, the tinea cruis, if we come to in little detail, this condition most often occurs when people wear tight fitting clothes that traps in moisture. This is also called it jock itch. Uh, this can can be patient can come with the itchy red, and this can be a open ring shaped rashes. Treatment includes keeping the groin area clean and dry as well as applying topical antifungal. Now, next most common infection, fungal infection is tinea versicolor. This is very important as far as clinical diagnosis is concerned. Why? Because in this uh, fungus, like this is mainly a kind of yeast. Why I'm telling you it's important? Because in this infection, patient comes with the white patches also. So, you know, people can get confused. Oh, this is a white patches. So they can confuse with the vitiligo. Sometimes, you know, uh, they, they, they come with a, a totally white patches only without, and if you see closely, then you see, can able to see the surrounding, uh, pretty six versicular. Otherwise, they come with the, uh, white patches only. So whenever patient is coming with the, these kind of lesions on the back of upper back, neck, and the upper chest, three common sites, you should look for tinea versicolor. So the tinea versicolor or pretrasis versicolor is caused by an overgrowth of yeast on the skin. It most often affects teen and young adults. The condition is not a contagious. The symptoms include patches of skin that are lighter or darker than the surrounding skin, often on the torso and shoulders. Treatment can be a antifungal creams or lotion and shampoo. However, skin discrimination may last for weeks to months. Sometimes we usually give for to improve this white patches after clearing the fungal infection, 
sometimes we use the treatment same as we are using in the vitiligo because we need to stimulate the pigmentation in these kind of patients <clears throat> so next now we come to the <clears throat> viral infections so viral there are many kinds of viral infection which we daily encounter with the day to day practice like herpes simplex herpes zoster herpes simplex can occur around the mouth even sometimes on the cheek area or and sometimes if it is occurring on the around the cheek or the upper cheek area we usually get confused over it uh, uh herpes or not so typically lesions is there are vesicular lesions in bunches of uh, clusters are there you should suspect to the herpes simplex herpes zoster which is like clinically anybody is coming like this or face they are coming like this lesions you should suspect the herpes zoster sometimes in herpes zoster the pain is such a severe that patient usually go first to the orthopedician suppose they are developing chest infection or anything so they feel a bony pain so they feel oh this might be a some i'm feeling pain in ribs or something which related to the ortho so they usually go to the ortho then after 2 3 days after incubation period then once the eruption they start then they come to us oh this is not the uh, ortho problem this is a skin problem so any person is coming with a severe radiating pain unbearable pain you should suspect the herpes zoster and at least keep under observation for 2 days if you are not getting any lesion then it might be a different thing but in two suppose 2 days patient is starting developing this cluster so diagnosis is confirmed so oral herpes spread through close personal contact such as kissing oral herpes causes tiny fluid lesions called cold sores or fever ulcers which can be occur medication can speed up healing and reduce recurrences uh now we come to the genital herpes genital herpes caused by the herpes simplex virus the disease can affect both men and women they can be pain itching small sore appears for they form ulcers and scabs after initial infection genital herpes lies dormant in the body symptoms can recur for years many of patients become a repeated recurrence of genital herpes if the recommendations are suppose if a patient is coming more than 6 episodes Dr. Satish, in Dr. a year uh, yeah can you uh... You speak more loudly because your voice is very low. Oh, sorry, sorry. Actually, <laughs> this is problem for me. Okay. Uh, I think now, now it's better. Yeah, better. Okay. So uh, now we come to the next. Ah, uh, let me finish. Like uh, as I told you, many patients they come. Like if patient is coming. more than 6 episode in a year the genital herpes we call it chronic recurrence and in those kind of cases we give chronic suppressive therapy that means 6 month of antifungal in our allopathy so that reduces the chances of recurrence now we come to the herpes zoster which is a very uh, say severe infection and patient uh, it gives lot of trauma to the patient and severe pain sometimes patient can't bear and they comes with the tears so anyone who is had chicken pox may develop a uh, herpes zoster it does is it, it's not known what reactivates the virus is most commonly we say if immunity is going down then this the, uh, the immunity low immunity can cause the herpes zoster Herpes zoster causes a painful rash that may appear as a strip of blisters on the torso or any uh, nerve which uh, which is affected by that. Pain can persist even after the rash is gone, which is called as a post herpetic neuralgia. If patient is if we are treating herpes zoster 
uh, as uh, as soon as possible then the chances of post hepatic neuralgia is less so the treatment should be start in uh, 24 hours to 48 hours so the treatment includes pain relieving agent antiviral medicines like valacyclovir or uh, acyclovir uh, chickenpox vaccine in childhood or the uh, shingles vaccine as an adult can minimize the risk of developing severe infection now we come to the next infection which is uh, alopecia areata the alopecia areata occurs when the immune system attacks hair follicle and may be brought on by severe stress the main symptoms is hair loss treatment may include uh, underlying um, con- to treat the underlying condition like uh, and this can be treated like we usually give intralesional injections of stride and uh, oral and topical uh, solution for the hair recall now we come to the androgenic alopecia uh, androgenic alopecia with male pattern baldness hair loss typically occurs on the top and front of the head with females pattern baldness thinning occurs on the top and crown of the head this thinning in women often start as a widening of the center the center part of the scalp uh that leaves the front hair line unaffected medications may prevent further hair loss in some cases surgeons can transplant hair or reduce the area of bald skin natural looking wig and hair pieces can help to cover the hair losses if patient don't want to go for the surgical treatment or the medical treatment next common condition is melasma or in hindi we call it jhaiya this is a most common uh, problem which we encounter day to day practice melasma also known as scoliosma the mask of pregnancy when present in pregnant women is a tan or dark skin coloration although it can affect anyone melasma is particularly common in women especially pregnant women and those who are taking oral or patch contraceptive or hormone replacement therapy warts again uh, it's difficult to treat an alopecia a uh, lot of chances of recurrence high chances of recurrence patients comes you know uh, repeatedly if it is on beard area then chances of recurrence is very high the warts are a small fleshy bump on the skin or mucous membrane caused by human papilloma type 1 virus and uh, treatment can include in alopecia CO2 laser or radio frequencies. Molluscum contagiosum, next viral infection. This viral skin infection that can result in uh, in around firm painless bumps. Treatment is extraction. Extraction we can do with the needle extraction or the laser extraction. Now we come to the eczema, which is a next common type of skin diseases. Uh, eczema. is the name of group of condition that cause the skin to become red itchy and inflamed there are eight different types of eczema the names are atopic dermatitis pontic dermatitis dyshydrotic eczema hand eczema neurodermatitis or lichen planus chronicus nummular eczema seborrheic dermatitis and spastic dermatitis <clears throat> now we come to the one by one in little detail atopic dermatitis atopic dermatitis is a type of eczema that is chronic and inflammatory though the exact cause of atopic dermatitis is unknown it happens when the immune system goes into overdrive atopic dermatitis usually begin in the childhood often first six months of the life when you are when you or your child have atopic dermatitis it might improve at times or it may get worse some common symptoms of atopic dermatitis are dry and scaly skin redness itchy cracks cracks behind the ears or behind the knee means it mainly involve the flexor aspect of the body a rash on the cheek arms and leg open crust or vp sores
contact dermatitis <clears throat> happen when the skin touches with it and substance or allergen these make the skin inflamed causing it to burn itch and become red there are two kinds of contact dermatitis one is evident contact dermatitis and allergic contact dermatitis contact dermatitis usually appears on the hand or part of the body that touches the evident symptoms of the contact dermatitis include redness and rashes burning and swelling blister that may weep or crust this hydrotic eczema is a condition that produces small itchy blisters on the edges of the finger toes palms and soles of the feet stress allergies such as hay fever moist hands and feet or exposure to the nickel cobalt or chromium salt may be triggers of this hydrotic eczema this type of eczema is twice as common in women as it is in men this is also known as pomphylix uh, symptoms of this hydrotic eczema includes small fluid filled blisters on the fingers hands and feet they can be itchy reddy red scaly lesion and they can be pain also if super added bacterial infection is there now we come to the hand eczema the hand eczema which is also known as hand dermatitis is very common up to 10% of the population has this type of eczema it is the result of both internal and external factors including genetics and contact with allergens or irritant substances like chemicals some symptoms of hand eczema the same it's almost same like itching pain they can be itching pain or blisters now we come to the next one lichen simplex chronicus which is also known as neurodermatitis lichen simplex chronicus or lsc is an itchy skin disease that is similar to atopic dermatitis people with lichen simplex chronicus tend to get thick scaly patch on their skin as a result of too much rubbing and scratching some symptoms of lichen simplex simplex chronicus the patient can have a thick scale scaly plaque or nape of the neck or shoulders or bottom of the feet they can be itchy or discolored skin we usually found in now we come to the next one is nubular eczema the difference is like you can see the nubular means the coin shaped lesion in this na patient usually present with the coin shaped lesions also known as discoid eczema is a common type of eczema that can occur at any age it looks very different than the usual eczema and can be much more difficult to treat people with nubular eczema develop coin shaped spots on their skin which may be very itchy it is thought to be triggered by things like insect bite reactions to the skin skin inflammation or dry skin in the winter some symptoms of the nubular eczema are round coin shaped spots lesions which can be itchy dry or wet Now, next common condition is seborrheic dermatitis considered as a chronic form of eczema seborrheic dermatitis appears to on the body where there are a lot of oil producing glands like the upper back nose and scalp the exact cause of seborrheic dermatitis is unknown although genes and hormones plays a very important role microorganisms such as yeast and that lives on the skin naturally can also contribute to seborrheic dermatitis unlike many other forms of eczema seborrheic dermatitis is not the result of allergy seborrheic dermatitis often appears on the scalp where symptoms may range from dry flakes to yellow greasy scales with reddened skin patient can also develop seborrheic dermatitis on other oily areas of their body such as the face chest and the upper back common symptoms of seborrheic dermatitis are redness greasy swollen skin white or yellow crust or flakes can be there come to the next static dermatitis static dermatitis which is not very common uh static dermatitis is sometimes called venous 
chassis dermatitis because of dependent uh, edema or dependent pressure of veins it usually occurs on the uh, around the ankle or lower leg because it usually happens when there is a problem with blood flow in the veins and pressure develop this pressure can cause fluid to leak out of the vein and into the skin resulting in stress dermatitis symptoms are swelling redness and scaling can be there there can be a sometimes darkness of that particular area is also there and if it is uh super added bacterias are there then can they can be oozing or cracks these are the pictures were in short like where you can diagnose the uh, common uh, eczemas like atopic atopic dermatitis just to summarize again this is like atopic dermatitis occurs mainly on the flexor aspect like behind the knee elbows Ne- neck folds of neck like all flexor areas mainly if they are there then we call it atopic most likely it's atopic dermatitis contact dermatitis means suppose a patient is coming with the uh, problem on where they are tying some metal things like uh, if this patient is tying uh, uh, this watch over here and developing same lesion so it's more contact dermatitis so this hydrotic eczema hand eczema neurodermatitis so these with these pictures only you can differentiate different so eczema is a group of disease once we are saying eczema the treatment is little different with the uh, according to the sub type of that eczema xanthal asthma is the next common problem xanthal asthma is sharply demarcated yellowish deposit of fat underneath the skin usually on or around the eyelid while they are neither harmful nor painful these minor growth may be disfiguring and can be removed by co2 laser but not co2 laser sometimes we apply some chemical also like we have a trichloroacetic acid so we just apply it forms a crust and shade off within 2 3 sessions usually goes sometimes again patient uh, those who are not very literate they think like they develop this uh, vitiligo again because sometimes it not doesn't look like a yellow it looks like a white so they think oh i'm developing a little white patch so what to do so we have to be uh, very careful while examining this kind of lesion if they are starting with a very small lesion macular amyloidosis which is less common but it's very difficult to treat in a allopath so macular amyloidosis is the most subtle form of cutaneous amyloidosis which is characterized by brownish macules in a ripple pattern distributed predominantly over the trunk and extremities the common sites of macular amyloidosis are upper back upper chest uh arms and if it is severe that can lead to the lower limbs involvement also acanthosis nigricans this is very commonly we are encountering uh, nowadays why because of the lifestyle modification people are get, gaining more weight and it's related to the weight gain so a skin condition characterized by dark velvety patches in body folds and creases again this condition also involve mainly affect the folds of body suppose underarm neck groin area like these areas they are mainly uh, acanthosis nigricans typically occurs in people those who are obese or have diabetes more rarely it can be warning sign of cutaneous tumors in an internal organ such as the stomach or liver dark velvety patches of the skin often appears in the armpits groin and neck treatment again there are various kind of treatment but the main, most important thing is we have to tell the patient they have to reduce their weight according to the height 
they have to attain their weight according to their height then only we have seen like couple of patients just we usually say try to reduce your weight and people are reducing and this problem automatically goes away so if any patient is coming with the compensation neglection before starting any treatment just say we try to reduce your weight whatever you are having try to reduce 10% of the existing weight so yes as you all know it's a very uh, we can say chronic and relapsing disease a condition in which skin cells build up and form scales and itchy dry patches so there is it is thought to be a immune system problem triggered that triggers includes infection stress and cold the most common symptoms is a rash on the skin but sometimes the rash involves the nails or joint if psoriasis uh, involving the nails then we call it nail psoriasis and if involving joints we call it psoriatic arthritis so if any patient is coming with the extensive psoriasis and having complaining the joint pain we should think for the like now he or she is developing psoriatic arthritis so treatment will be uh, the aims to remove scales and stop skin cells from growing so quickly topical ointment light therapy and medication can offer a good result but if it is extensive we usually give the immunosuppressive other immunosuppressive like biological cyclosporin etotrexate it depends like if it's a severe severe psoriasis we give the uh, immunosuppressive if it is mild few patches are there we can uh, control with the topical ointments only skin tag a common skin growth in which a short narrow stalk stick out skin tags are usually harmless and painless the main symptom is growth on the skin often on the neck upper chest underarms and eyelids they may become irritated from the rubbing against treatment in our allopath to is uh, just a uh, remover this is see these skin tags na in day to day practice is very important just i want to share why because sometimes na if you are not closely observing you can uh, diagnose them as a wart many patients come they say sir i am having warts i said just show me they say then i usually say oh this is not wart because this is a huge difference in in tags and warts wart is a uh, you know infectious thing which can spread if you are being and one wart is there then they can make it two three warts like that. but skin this skin tags they are not infectious so one is infection was in not infection in that uh, the wart we can um, offer some can medical treatment also or the chemical treatment but in this case there is no treatment except removal with the laser next common uh, problem is scabies which is a contagious intensely itchy skin caused by tiny burrowing mites scabies is contagious and spread quickly through close physical contact in a family school or nursing home the most common symptoms of scabies is intense itching in the area where the mite burrows scabies can be treated by the killing the mite and their eggs with medication that is applied from the neck down and left from the left for the eight hours the mite can also be killed using oral medication if you are just a practical point i just want to share here uh if you are suspecting scabies so try to examine the genitalia if patient is having the lesion on genitalia it's a 100% uh, scabies so treat as a scabies any any person who is coming with the uh, itching which is aggravating especially at night think scabies just it, it takes one minute just ask them oh itching especially at night uh if possible then examine for the folds area and the genital area if these kind of eruptions where I, you can see the pictures 
this this is a serious error uh, scabies but even tiny eruption you should think scabies uh so this is a like next is impetigo which is a bacterial infection sometimes uh, this is very uh, you know clinically it looks like a uh honey uh, com appearance you can say like very uh slight honey crust honey crust appearance you can say um some mostly the small kids it's a highly contagious skin infection that causes red sores on the face impetigo may mainly affect infants and children if a patient is coming this kind of lesion and they are infant or children very common and they spread like very fast they start with a tiny dot and they spread a uh, around circle circle like this round circle we usually get confused like is it a tinea or any fungal infection no if patient is having this particular appearance then it's mostly like and they have infant or children think for impetigo with this i would like to thank you all for patience listening sorry for uh, technical glitch today no worries thank Dr. you sir for, for this wonderful session thank you thank you so if any uh, if any questions or any practical point of this session sir, even want i can hello sir yeah yeah please so what is difference between tetia and the differential diagnosis with the this hydrotic eczema that you uh, explained before in eczema tetia and this it is similar in seeing differential diagnosis in petechia and that petechia you want yeah. to say petiki petiki yeah 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 petiki petiki but petiki to you will develop on your you know mainly on the body there not uh, it is it is seen like uh, same that's why i no. asking uh the sites are different petiki they are blood Uh, it they looks like a blood stain like uh, very red tiny dot 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 and mm. it's usually on body pitiki usually develop body on the skin they can't occur on the thick skin like you know this palm and the sole skin is quite thick pitiki is very rare to find on the palms and the feet and they the dyshydrotic eczema you are mainly finding on hands and feet okay so dyshydrotic eczema mainly and related to, yes dyshydrotic eczema yeah. mainly is on hands and feet and we, it's related to the mainly sweat gland the pathology behind is sweat gland okay sir thank you sir and pitiki the pathology is behind the blood mostly the blood related problem they lead to the uh, pitiki suppose because if person is coming with the pitiki we should rule out the coagulation profile we have to ask the patient to come with the coagulation profile okay hello hello yes dr shatish one more question is there all uh, uh, okay this is related to homeopathy the question is can moroccan contagious occur in 25 year old person i think yes it can be yeah yeah in... uh, you know uh, moroccan contagious is a virus infection sometimes we used to say it's a sexually transmitted disease so patients can come at any age but 
it's very um, strange. Like even we usually get the patient, young patient, like five years, six years of age, even the two three years. Then we usually tell the parents or the attendant of patient like you should suspect the child abuse. So if any patient is coming, like small child, they are coming with the like three, four years or especially male or female, any child, we should suspect the child abuse also. We have to take the history repeatedly. So it's very clinical, I mean, practical point. I'm just discussing like whenever you are getting a young, very young child, with the molluscum, you should suspect the child abuse also and take the history accordingly. Yes, doctor, this is very true to take a proper history, even in uh, a small uh, cases of the skin. That is the uh, yes. wonderful part of every treatment. So next question is, sir, I have uh, come across patient with thinning hypopigmented patches scattered over extremities with no symptoms. What is the probable diagnosis? Uh, where they are getting? Uh, hypopigmented patches scattered over extremities. Extremities? Yeah, so, like uh, 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 I think Dr. Preeti Karki is asking that uh, uh, some are coming with the small uh, hypopigmented white patches. Uh, oh, especially so the forearm. I think uh, they are asking for the uh, usually now patient up to 30 years in 30% uh, of normal population. Sometimes the patient, they develop tiny uh, pin head size, you can say, dot, 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 macular, hypopigmented tiny dots, which we call it IGH, idiopathic gutted hypomelanosis. See, we can keep a lot of differential diagnosis if hypopigmented macules are there. But, as she is asking, especially for the extremities, the most probable diagnosis can be a IGH, idiopathic gutted hypomelanosis. In this patient developed tiny hypopigmented macules, like pin head size, they will not increase in size. They will not increase in size. So just reassure the patient, like this is a disease, uh, it's a skin problem, which is a, we usually find 30% of normal population. So just forget. No treatment is required. Just tell them if they're increasing size or if they're increasing number, then you should have a DDs like vitiligo or any infectious problem which can lead to the hypopigmented. But I think the, um, IgH is the most common differential diagnosis in those kind of. What was the first uh, question, Dr. Deepak, uh, like when some problem and, was there and yeah, somebody first, asked this first question? First, the first question, question is, uh, is skin is a mirror of skin economy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a mirror of? Sick economy. Yes, that is a wonderful thing uh, they want to know. But uh, uh, if you can have any answer for this. Okay. Uh, uh, if the voice is very low. Can you speak? The, pardon me. Just, can you repeat the question? Yes. Uh, the question is, the skin is a mirror of sick economy. Is the skin. So uh, what he want to ask that uh, the representation of the skin disease is a representation of the internal disease. In the medical terms. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, like, uh, the some internal diseases can represent them as externally, like, some markers. She want to ask, like, some internal disease can present on the skin also, like, like this. Okay. Yes, good. So, thank yes, you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Shatish. Thank you so much for uh, for this wonderful session. And uh, thank you, are, uh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I would like to thank Albert Clinic also for inviting me as a guest lecture. And it was patient. For thanks for patient listening. <laughs>
Yes, and uh, from uh, our Orbit Institute of Applied Homeopathy, uh, from our principal head, Dr. Shilpi Aroda, we are uh, giving you a certificate for this uh, wonderful session. We will oh, send you a you. copy on your email also. And uh, this is, uh, we are really thankful. Dr. Shilpi, do you yeah. want to say something? Yes, thank you, Dr. Satish, for your wonderful time investing your time and giving us so much knowledge about skin. I know it will be very, very helpful for many of the people who have joined the session today. More than that, uh, very patiently you were speaking and telling in short each and everything you have covered, in fact, majority of the portions. So I'm really thankful from Orbit Institute sites for coming and imparting your knowledge to us. Thanks a lot. And Thank we are you. happy Thank to you. have you have an association with uh, OIH in the coming more days. We'll be very mm -hmm. happy to have you uh, as a constant speaker for us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No, no, sure. That's for sure. Thank you. Yeah, I would now ask Dr. Deepak to present some case on skin, which uh, he has successfully treated through homeopathy. Yes. Uh, so Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Shilpi. And Dr. Satish, uh, I know you are very busy. If you want to stay with us, you can. Uh, and if you have any work, uh, then you can uh, leave uh, the session. We are happy if you are there to listen. Yeah, yeah. Then... I'm there. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank, thank you, you thank you, thank you. So here is me, Dr. Deepak Sharma, and thank you so much, Dr. Shilpi, and uh, thank you, Dr. Shanvi, uh, for assisting me. So uh, let me start with the, the first question. Dr. Shatish is here. So uh, uh, we are starting about that. And the first question is, uh, I just click on, and uh, that uh, Dr. Muhammad Muzamil is want to ask, the, is the skin, uh, uh, I think here is the chat. The first question is, is the skin is in the middle of sick economy? Yes. The thought is, uh, Dr. Juj, uh, I have questions about your questions. देखिए अगर हम किसी मैप को हम सैटेलाइट के थ्रू एक इमेज देखते हैं जब कभी अर्थ की तो हमें बहुत सारे मैप्स में दिखाई देता होगा कि एक रेड कलर का निशान है कुछ जगह ग्रीन है कुछ जगह सीज है कुछ जगह बिल्कुल वाइट है कुछ जगह तो हम एक इकोनॉमिकल जो मिरर देखते हैं मतलब एक स्किन को देखते हैं हम बॉडी में एक मैप की तरह देखते हैं एक सैटेलाइट से हमें नहीं पता होता कि बॉडी के अंदर क्या चल रहा होता है हाँ लेकिन हमें बहुत सारी चीजें पता लग जाती हैं अगर हम इस मैप की बात कर रहे हैं और हम सेटेलाइट से देख रहे हैं तो हमें अर्थ में रेड कलर का मतलब पता लग जाएगा कि ये कोई वॉर्म एरिया है हमें व्हाइट से पता लग जाएगा कि ये कोई हो सकता है कि स्पेस हो ये हमें ब्लू से पता लग जाएगा कि ये कोई सी का एरिया है ग्रीन से पता लग जाएगा कि ये कोई बहुत ग्रीन एरिया है तो हमें एक आइडिया लग जाता तो जो आपके मिरर का एक आइडिया है हमें स्किन की डिजीज से जो पता लगता है वो होम्योपैथी के ये पता लगता है कि इंटरनल बॉडी में कुछ ना कुछ हो रहा होता है अगर आप एक डॉक्टर शानवी ने बहुत ही अच्छा क्वेश्चन पूछा कि जो स्किन के ट्रीटमेंट है होमोपैथी के अंदर वो बहुत लेस ट्रीटेबल है या बहुत वर्स ट्रीटेबल है तो मैं आपको बता दूं कि बहुत सारे ऐसे स्किन के केसेस हैं जिनको होमोपैथी जिनके लिए फेमस है जैसे भी डॉक्टर साहब ने वार्ड की बात करी सोलिस की बात करी बहुत सारे डिजीज के बारे में बात करी तो वहां पर होमोपैथी बहुत वर्स स्पेस में काम करती है बहुत पुरानी मतलब फेमस है होमोपैथी स्किन के लिए और हम लोग जब भी काम करते हैं तो हम ये जानने की कोशिश करते हैं कि इंटरनल इश्यूज क्या हैं तो हम बिना किसी उस मैप के हम कभी भी किसी एक प्रॉपर डायग्नोसिस को नहीं पहुंच पाते हम बिना एक मैप के कभी भी हम लोग एक अच्छे ट्रीटमेंट पे नहीं पहुंच पाते तो आज जो मेरा उद्देश्य रहेगा कि मैं आप लोगों को ऐसी कुछ चीज सिखाऊँ क्योंकि हमारे इंस्टीट्यूट का नाम है ऑर्बिट इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ अप्लाइड होम्योपैथी इसका मतलब ये है कि आपको कहाँ एक छोटी सी चीज से आपको कैसे मेडिसिन तक पहुंचना है बहुत ही जल्दी से क्लिक करना है तो यहाँ पर आज हम इसी के कुछ के बारे में बात करेंगे वो डॉक्टर मोहम्मद मुजम्मिल आपका जो आंसर है वो कुछ सॉल्व हुआ होगा अगर मैं ठीक हूँ अपनी जगह तो और आ, मैं चाहता हूँ कि अब आ, मैं जो अपनी स्लाइड्स हैं वो प्रेजेंट करूँ आप लोग सब लोगों को स्लाइड विजिबल हो रही है थैंक यू
अपनी बात को कुछ कह नहीं पा रहे थे मैं समझा कुछ होगा तो लेकिन मैंने उसको जब बाहर भेजा अपने स्टूडेंट्स को और उसके बारे में कुछ जानने की कोशिश करी तो मैं आज शेयर कर रहा हूँ कि आखिर आप इसको कैसे पहुंचेंगे तो बहुत आराम से सुनते रहिए और मुझे इसकी मेडिसिन के बारे में आप लोग जरूर बताइएगा कि आखिर ये कैसे आप यहाँ तक पहुंचे मतलब हम लोग कैसे इस मेडिसिन तक बहुत जल्दी से पहुंचेंगे जो केस था वो फोर्टी टू ईयर का मेल एक था जो बहुत ही बड़ी हेजिटेट मोड में बहुत सेटनेस के मोड में आया और ये अपने जेनेटल वर्ड्स को लेकर करके मेरे पास आया जो उसके पेनिस के बिल्कुल डॉर्सल सरफेस पे और थोड़ी सराउंडिंग्स में ग्लास पेनिस पे भी थोड़े स्प्रेड होने लग रखे थे इस चीज को लेकर के वो इतना ज्यादा चिंतित था कि वो शायद बहुत सारी बातों को कह नहीं पा रहा था बहुत सारे डॉक्टर से ऑलरेडी मिल चुका था आ, अगर मैं बात करूँ तो स्ट्रीम की तो वो एलोपैथिक होम्योपैथिक आयुर्वेदिक ये तीन सिस्टम से ऑलरेडी ट्रीटमेंट ले चुका था लेकिन कहीं भी उसको कोई सेटिस्फेक्शन नहीं मिल रहा था या उसकी बातों का या जो उसके वर्ड्स में उसको कोई रिलीफ नहीं मिल रहा था तो मैं आपको दिखाना चाहता हूँ कि ये जो पहला मेरे पास जब आया 16 जुलाई को तब ये इसकी पहली पिक्चर थी जब ये ऐसे वॉट मेरे पास लेकर के आया और ये रात को सो भी नहीं पाता था इन पिक्चर्स को देख करके वो डेली डेली अपने पा, अपने पास ही ये सब उसी की अपनी डेली क्लिक्स हैं डेली मेरे पास वो जब से मेरे पास आया तब से डेली मेरे पास एक रिकॉर्ड भेजता है कि आज ऐसा है जब सोलह जुलाई को जब मेरे पास आया था तो इतना चिंतित था कि वो ये कह रहा था कि सर बस आप मुझे बता दो कि मैं बच पाऊंगा या नहीं या मेरे पास आपके पास ऐसा कोई ट्रीटमेंट है या नहीं मैं ऑलरेडी इतने सारे ट्रीटमेंट ले चुका और बहुत सारे डॉक्टर्स ऐसे भी हैं जिनके साथ वो ट्रीटमेंट ले चुका जिनके साथ उन्होंने बहुत सारी काउंसलिंग भी की है डॉक्टर ने लेकिन वो ठीक नहीं हो रहा है तो सिम्टम वॉज तो मल्टीपल मॉसेज लाइक मस्से उसने सीधे ये बोला कि बहुत सारे मस्से हैं वर्ड्स इनको बोलते हैं ऑन सेंसेशन समटाइम इचिंग वॉज देयर ओनली वन वार्मिंग टाइट क्लॉस So, जब भी कभी टाइट क्लॉथ कुछ पहन लेता था तभी कोई इचिंग होती थी वरना जो ये मस्से हैं उसके इससे वो थोड़ा परेशान था खासकर उसकी बर्निंग सेंसेशंस को लेकर के और मैंने बताया जैसे कि वो बहुत सारे ऐसे डॉक्टर से भी कंसल्ट कर चुका था जहाँ पे उसके ऑलरेडी बहुत सारे टेस्ट हुए उसकी सारी जो रिपोर्ट थी वो नेगेटिव थी और या जो ऐसी रिपोर्ट थी जिनके मार्कर्स आते हैं वो सब नॉर्मल विदिन नॉर्मल रेंज थे हिस्ट्री थी जो सबसे मेन पार्ट था वो क्यों इतना ज्यादा डरा हुआ था उसका कारण था कि उसने तीन से चार महीने पहले किसी एक अननोन फीमेल के साथ कोई सेक्सुअल रिलेशन बनाए थे जिसके तकरीबन एक से डेढ़ हफ्ते के बाद ही उसको ये वर्ड्स या जो मस्से हैं वो अपेयर हुए ये उसका सबसे मेन रीजन था क्योंकि ये बात वो बहुत सारे लोग डॉक्टर्स को बता भी नहीं रहा था और अगर एक दो डॉक्टर्स को बताया तो उन्होंने तुरंत एकदम एच को टेस्ट किया एच के बहुत सारे मार्कर्स लिए बहुत सारे टेस्ट किए जो कि सब कुछ नॉर्मल आ रहे थे लेकिन फिर भी डॉक्टर्स ने कहा सके हो सकता है कि छह महीने बाद या एक साल बाद या फिर आपको किसी भी टाइम की कोई इन्फेक्शन हो सकती है तो इसका जो ट्रीटमेंट है वो सर्जिकल रिमूवल है इसके अलावा कोई ट्रीटमेंट नहीं है जो होम्योपैथिक ट्रीटमेंट कर रहे थे उनसे जो साइज है उनके लगातार कोई कम नहीं हो रहे थे और उसकी जो बर्निंग सेंसेशन है वो भी कम नहीं हो रही थी उसके एच आई टेस्ट सब कुछ नेगेटिव थे सब चीजें ठीक थी लेकिन जो उसके अंदर एक मन के अंदर जो फियर था वो नहीं जा रहा था और इतना फियर था कि वो अपनी वाइफ को से कोई रिलेशन नहीं बना पा रहा था अपनी वाइफ को बता नहीं पा रहा था और ऑब्वियसली कौन सी बात है कि कोई ऐसा कैसे बताएगा कि ऐसा हुआ और उसको ये भी डर था कि कहीं मेरे से वाइफ को या किसी भी दूसरे इंसान को ना फैल जाए किसी टच से कहीं बहुत डरने लगा ये सब उसके बाद में मन के अंदर जो फियर थे ये बहुत ही बहुत ही रिमार्केबल थे मैंने उसके लिए पूरी हिस्ट्री ली सब कुछ आया लेकिन मैंने इस केस को बहुत सिंपल वे में सोचा मैं चाहता हूँ कि आप भी मुझे चैट में इसके जो भी अभी तक आपने पिक्चर देखी जो आपने सिम्टम सुने ये जो भी आपने इसकी हिस्ट्री अभी तक सुनी है इसके आधार पर आ, मैं आपको एक मिनट के सुना देता हूँ आप प्लीज मुझे चैट करके जरूर बताए की आखिर क्या हो सकती है सभी लोग पार्टिसिपेट करेंगे तो ज्यादा अच्छा लगेगा तो आपको पता लगेगा की हम बहुत ही सिंपल सी चीज को कैसे मैनेज कर सकते हैं सब लोग जो भी आपके दिमाग में आ रही है मेडिसिन गुड अभी नाइट्रिक एसिड और आर्सेनिक वंडरफुल शिवांगनी बहुत अच्छे आर्सेनिक वार्ड के वार्ड बहुत अच्छे हैं सच में
is there. The branch is very good. Lambda square. Thoda simple kar hai. Or koi positive term. Good. बहुत अच्छा मुझे लगता है कि तीस में से पंद्रह आंसर तो आने चाहिए एंथुजा ये ये तो वंडरफुल रेमेडी है किसी भी अप्रोच से अगर आप किसी भी अप्रोच से मेडिसिन बताएंगे तो सभी मेडिसिन कहीं ना कहीं एक दूसरे से रिलेशन रखती हैं वर्ड्स को लेकर के खैर जो भी अभी तक मैक्सिम बताई अभिषेक दुग्गल ने शिवांगनी ने आकांक्षा चौहान ने अनिमेश पॉस्टिकम बताई है और आकांक्षा चौहान ने एक बार फिर से पूछा तो थैंक यू आप सब लोगों का और आपने पार्टिसिपेट किया ये अच्छा लगा अब इस केस को सिंपलेस्ट कैसे बना सकते हैं नाउ मैंने फिर से पिक्चर शेयर की शेयर की जो पहले शेयर की थी फिर से एक बार वर्ड को देखो और फिर से एक बार सोचो कि ऐसा क्या हो सकता है किसी के अभी भी दिमाग में आ रही हो तो प्लीज मुझे बताएं सेल्फ और ग्रेट गौतम दीपक जी बहुत अच्छे और भी कोई सी कोई दिमाग में आ रही हो मेडिसिन बहुत अच्छी ये एक बहुत अच्छा तरीका है इससे कम से कम जितने भी यहाँ पे लोग हैं इन ए, सब लोगों को जो वर्ड्स की मेडिसिन के बारे में भी डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस पता लग रही होगी सब लोग सोच रहे होंगे क्या क्या कहाँ कहाँ से आएगी लेकिन अभी जो मेडिसिन है उसके लिए हम लोग सिर्फ बहुत छोटा सा काम करते हैं और सिर्फ एक ही रूपरेख लिया जैसा कि आपने सबसे पहली साइड में देखा कि मैंने जो उसका सिम्टम पकड़ा वो था जो वर्ड था नंबर एक तो सेक्शुअल हिस्ट्री लेकर के आता है तो कौंडोमेटा हमारे हमारी रिपोर्टरी में दो वर्ड्स हैं इसको हमेशा डिफ्रेंशिएट करना सीखो कि कॉम्डाइलोमेटा क्या है और वर्ड क्या है हालांकि आज दोनों की टर्म एक सी है साइंटिफिक टर्म में जाएंगे तो दोनों चीजें एक सी हैं लेकिन जब भी कभी ऐसी कोई सेक्शुअल हिस्ट्री मिलेगी तो वहाँ कॉम्डाइलोमेटा कॉम्डाइलोमा के नाम से एक वायरस होता है जनरली वो रिमार्क करता है तो एक ही सिंगल मेडिसिन है मतलब पूरी रिपोर्ट्री में मेल जेनेटल सेक्स कॉम्डाइलोमेटा बर्निंग सर्वाइन इज द सिंगल मेडिसिन अब ऐसे रोबिक्स का मतलब जब हम लोग आज इस इंस्टीट्यूट का जो ओपन करने का मेरा उद्देश्य था या शिल्पी का हम लोग ने जब सबसे पहले प्लान किया तो हमने ये प्लान किया कि होम्योपैथी को कॉम्प्लिकेट नहीं बनाना है होम्योपैथी को बहुत सिंपल सी परिभाषा में जो नियम है बस उसी के अकॉर्डिंग काम करना है तो जब हमने सिर्फ एक सिम्टम पे इस मेडिसिन को देखा तो मैंने जब इसको रीड करना शुरू किया तो सबसे ज्यादा जो सबसे प्यारी बात लगी वो बात लगी कि इस सिम्टम के इस मेडिसिन के ज्यादातर सिम्टम उस पर्सन में मैच हो रहे थे ये सबसे बेस्ट क्लास थी अब आप सबाइना के जब इफेक्ट देखेंगे तो ये सबाइना के इफेक्ट थे तो रिपोर्टाइजेशन का भी मैंने एक स्क्रीनशॉट शेयर कर दूँ जहाँ पे सिंगल मेडिसिन है कॉन्डाइलोमेटा सबसे ऊपर मेन रूबरिक है उसके बाद मेल जेनेटल सेक्स वॉल और उसमें बर्निंग में सबाइना सिंगल मेडिसिन है तो जहाँ पे भी किसी भी सब रूबरिक या रूबरिक के अंदर अगर आपको सिंगल मेडिसिन मिलती है एक मेन कंप्लेन के ऊपर मतलब जो भी आपके मेन कंप्लेन है अगर उसमें आपको कोई सिंगल मेडिसिन मिलती है तो इससे अच्छा कोई और आ, केस हो ही नहीं सकता ये सिंगल मेडिसिन के केस हैं थ्रेट के केसेस हैं और यही सिंगल मेडिसिन न्याज हो या कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हो सभी को एक ही साथ ठीक कर दिया अगर आप ऐसा देखना चाहते हैं तो अगर अगली बार से आप ऐसे सिंगल रोबरेज को सर्च करो और देखो अगर कोई सिंगल मेडिसिन आ रही है तो उससे फिर फिजिकल सिम्टम्स को या उसके मेंटल सिम्टम्स को उस पर्सन के साथ मैच करो आप देखोगे नाइनटी नाइन से ज्यादा वो सभी चीजें मैच हो जाएंगी नाउ अब सेवाइना को देना कैसे है और उसको आपका एप्लीकेशन कैसे करना है ये आपको कोसोलॉजी बहुत अच्छे रहना चाहिए हमने जो कोसोलॉजी अपनाई वो सेवाइना 200 हंड्रेड वाटर डोज दी वाटर डोज का मतलब है कि हम लोग 100 एम ऑफ वाटर में तीन से चार ड्रॉप एस एल डालते हैं और वन सिंगल ड्रॉप ऑफ द सिलेक्टिव मेडिसिन हम लोग उसको प्रिपेयर करते हैं शेक करते हैं और पेशेंट को बोलते हैं कि हर दो से तीन घंटे के अंदर एक एक स्पून ले लें ये सिर्फ वन डे का प्रोसेस करते हैं जनरली कभी कभी ऐसा होता है कि एक या दो डोज के बाद भी पेशेंट को किसी टाइप का कोई एग्रेवेशन आता है या किसी टाइप का कोई सिम्टम आता है तो हम उसको वहाँ भी स्टॉप कर देते हैं तो वाटर डोजेस का ये मतलब है कि जब भी आपको कोई ऐसा मेन कंप्लेन के साथ कोई भी ऐसा आधा सिम्टम प्रोड्यूस हो तो उसको वहीं का वहीं स्टॉप कर दो इसके लिए हो सकता है एक डोज में हो सकता है दो दिन में हो सकता है चार दिन में हो सकता है एक हफ्ते भी कभी कभी हम लोग वाटर डोज को चलाते हैं जनरली हम लोग वाटर डोज ही यूज कर रहे हैं इस समय तो सर मैंने टू की वाटर डोज देने के बाद जो रिजल्ट थे वो डेट वाइज यहाँ पर हैं 25 जुलाई को कैसा था उसके बाद 30 जुलाई को 
फिर उसके बाद जीरो फिफ्थ अगस्त को फिर टेंथ अगस्त को फिर उसके बाद फोर्टीन अगस्त को फिर सिक्सटीन अगस्त को नौ एक सबसे जो प्राइम सिम्टम था नौ हिस्सनेस कन्वर्ट इन टू है विद ए सिंगल डोज ऑफ सेवाइना अब वो इतना चेयरफुल हो गया था उसने कहा कि सर अब मैं चाहता हूँ कि अपनी वाइफ को मैं सब कुछ बता दूँ और अब मुझे इसके लिए घबराहट नहीं है क्योंकि अब मैं ठीक हो रहा हूँ और उसका जो वेट है वो भी थोड़ा कंट्रोल आ रहा था उसके जो मेंटल से वो भी चेंज हो रहे थे सभी चीजें उससे ठीक हो रही थी सेवाइना से हमें लगा कि कोई ऐसी दिक्कत नहीं आ रही थी कि हमें सेवाइना को कहीं चेंज करना पड़े या हमें सेवाइना को कहीं हाई प्रोटेंसी में जाना पड़े लेकिन हमेशा ध्यान रखो कि जब भी किसी आप डी प्रैक्टिंग मेडिसिन पर काम करते हो तो हमेशा उसका जो एक्यूट वो आएगा वो एक्यूट के मेडिसिन के अकॉर्डिंग ही आएगा तो आपको एक्यूट पर जरूर ध्यान रखना है क्योंकि ज्यादातर क्रॉनिक डिजीज को पढ़ने वाले लोग या पढ़ाने वाले लोग आपको ये नहीं बता पाते कि आप फिर आप एक्यूट में क्या करोगे तो जो एक्यूट है वो संभालना आना होम्योपैथी में सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज होता है अगर आपने किसी भी क्रॉनिक केस का एक्यूट संभाल लिया तो समझो आप एक अच्छे मास्टर हो गए हैं और आप होम्योपैथी को थोड़ा समझने लगे हैं नौ फिर तक सितंबर को ये पिक्चर थी लेकिन एट सितंबर को उनका एक सिम्टम आया जहां पर उसके साथ एक ब्लीडिंग और एक प्रेगनेस का निशान आया ये उसने मुझे उसी एट सितंबर की मॉर्निंग को भेजा कि सर आज ऐसा है तो मैंने कहा ठीक है आप आओ मेरे पास बहुत अच्छे से मतलब ऐसे पेशेंट होते हैं मैं इनको सबसे अच्छा पेशेंट बोलता हूँ जो अपने सिम्टम्स को ऑब्जर्व करके हमें हमेशा इन्फॉर्म करते रहते हैं फिर उनके साथ होता गया है तो डेली डेली मुझे ऐसी पिक्चर भेजता था तो जो सेलेक्टेड पिक्चर से वहाँ मैंने डेट वाइज आज आपको दिखाई है और ये सबसे लेटेस्ट केस है और ये इसलिए शेयर कर रहा हूँ क्योंकि सिंगल रोटिक पर सिंगल मेडिसिन पर ठीक होने वाला उसके एक्यूट की मेडिसिन के साथ ठीक होने वाला केस है जब भी ब्लीडिंग आई तो इसके सारे सिम्टम कुछ एसिड नाइट्रिक की तरफ मोड कर रहे थे तो कुछ लोगों ने जो एसिड नाइट्रिक मेडिसिन बताई थी इसके बाद मुझे पता लगा कि जिनसे वो पहले होम्योपैथिक ट्रीटमेंट लिया था वो भी एसिड नाइट्रिक दे रहे थे लेकिन एसिड नाइट्रिक से वो ठीक नहीं हो रहे थे हमें उस मेडिसिन की जरूरत थी जो सिंगल मेडिसिन है उसके सिंगल रूबरिक पे काम कर रही थी सेवाने की सबसे अच्छी बात रही कि उसने साइज तो रिड्यूस किया लेकिन उसका जो प्राइमरी सिम्टम था जो मेन सिम्टम था बर्निंग का वो खत्म किया तो आपको सिम्टम चाहिए ऐसे बहुत सारे वार्ड आएंगे आपके पास जो बर्निंग के साथ नहीं होंगे ऐसे बहुत सारे वार्ड आएंगे जो इचिंग के साथ नहीं होंगे ऐसे बहुत सारे वार्ड आएंगे जो आपको ब्लीडिंग के साथ नहीं मिलेंगे ये ऐसे बहुत सारे वार्ड आएंगे जो सिर्फ इरीटेट करते हैं और उसके अलावा उनका कोई सिम्टम नहीं होता तो हर एक वार्ड की अपनी एक कहानी है अपनी एक डेप्थ है उसको समझना पड़ेगा जैसे अभी डॉक्टर ने जिक्र किया था आर्सेनिक का तो आर्सेनिक के वार्ड भी वाकई में बहुत अच्छे काम करते हैं आर्सेनिक के पर्सनैलिटीज के जो वार्ड है वो हमने फोर हेड पे भी देखे हैं चिन एंड चिन पे भी देखे हैं बहुत सारे ठीक हुए हैं आर्सेनिक से भी तो उसके बाद हमने एसिड नाइटिन थर्टी वाटर डोज और ये भी हमने सिर्फ सिंगल डोज यूज करी जैसा मैं अभी आपको बता रहा था कि वाटर डोजेज में भी हम लोग कभी कभी सिर्फ हंड्रेड एम वाटर में दो से तीन ड्रॉप हम लोग एस की डाल करके उसके बाद एसिड जो भी सेलेक्टेड मेडिसिन है उसका सिंगल ड्रॉप दे करके और इसको यहाँ पे सिर्फ हमने सिंगल डोज दी इसको हमने रिपीट नहीं किया क्योंकि मुझे लगता है कि ये बहुत एक माइनर सिम्टम था और इसका कोई एक्यूट रहा होगा और उसके बाद अभी 11 सितंबर को उसने ये पिक्चर भेजी है उसका जो कट्स थे वो सब गायब हो गए हैं जो उसकी ब्लीडिंग थी वो स्टॉप हो गई है और ये केस अभी भी स्टिल कंटिन्यू है अभी वो शायद मेरे पास ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ को मेरे पास उस अपॉइंटमेंट शेड्यूल है वो आएगा मैंने उसको एश्योर किया है कि हम उसको दिवाली से पहले पहले बिल्कुल ठीक करेंगे और ये कन्फर्म है कि जैसे ही प्रोग्रेस अभी चल रही है उसके हिसाब से परमानेंट ठीक होगा और बहुत अच्छे से ठीक होगा कोई भी इन्वेस्टिगेशन अगर मान लो किसी वायरस ने उसको इफेक्ट किया होगा तो भी शायद अब जितना चेयरफुल हुआ है शायद वो भी उसको इन्फेक्ट ना करे ना सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ अलाइड सब्जेक्ट एंड कंक्लूजन ये मैंने आपको बताया था कि जैसे अभी बहुत सारे मेरे पास जब स्टूडेंट आते हैं तो मैं जब कॉन्डाइलो मेटा और वार्ड के बारे में हम लोग डिफ्रेंशिएशन अभी पढ़ रहे थे तो आप लोगों को ये एक जरूरी जो मालूम होनी चाहिए वो ये होनी चाहिए कि आपको रूबरिक कहाँ सेलेक्ट करना है और वो कहाँ से देखना है और उसकी मीनिंग क्या है ये जरूरी नहीं है कि आप सिर्फ मेंटल स्फेयर पे या किसी एक फिजिकल प्लेन पे या किसी भी चीज पे काम करो डॉक्टर हैनीमैन ने होम्योपैथी को इतना सिंपल बनाया था इतना सिंपल बनाया सोचो उन्होंने फर्स्ट ऑर्गन से लेकर के सेवन से सिक्स सेवन ऑर्गन तक इतना सिंपलीफाई किया लेकिन हमने बाद में उसको ना समझने के कारण अपने आप इतना ज्यादा कॉम्प्लिकेट कर दिया है कि हम उसमें उलझ के रह गए तो ऐसा नहीं करना है एलाइड सब्जेक्ट का मीनिंग ये है कि मैं सब लोगों को ये रिक्वेस्ट करता हूँ कि डॉक्टर हैनीमैन सर पहले डॉक्टर थे उसके बाद वो एक होम्योपैथ बने और वो डॉक्टर कब थे जब उन्होंने पूरे ह्यूमन बॉडी
तो अगर आपको पता है कि अगर पैथोलॉजी कहाँ मूव कर रही है वो पैथोलॉजिकल क्या सिम्टम है सोचो अगर इस वार्ड को मैं सिर्फ मेल जेनाइटल वार्ड में ढूंढता रह जाता तो मैं भी शायद उन्हीं मेडिसिन से पहुंच पाता जिस जैसे कि शायद हो सकता है पहले भी वहाँ पैथ पहुंचो लेकिन मैंने उसको सीधे एकदम डायरेक्टली केस को देखते ही मैं कोंडल में टप पहुंचा और सीधे सीधे एक मेडिसिन आ गई तो ये आज का जो एसेंस है एक सिंगल केस का आ, वो मैं मैंने आपके सामने पेश किया अभी हम लोग जो कोर्स ला रहे हैं डॉक्टर शिल्पी उसके बारे में बताएंगे और ओ जो आप सब लोगों का एक सपोर्ट चाहता है और हम चाहते हैं कि इस अप्लाइड होम्योपैथी का जो विस्तार है वो बहुत ज्यादा हो क्योंकि होम्योपैथी को कंफ्यूज ना करके हम लोग एक बहुत छोटे से कंसाइज फॉर्म में हम लोग होम्योपैथी को पढ़ाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं सारे सब्जेक्ट्स को लेकर के सभी को एक साथ लेकर के सो थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर शिल्पी थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर शानवी एंड दिस इज फ्रॉम माई साइड thank you dr deepak um, no doubt that was the <coughs> a very very important case and very uh, interesting case which you have presented and uh, i would like to say homeopathy can really do wonders in majority of the cases but the only thing is as you said that we are getting little deviated by just studying the uh, just not concentrating on the allied subject and just going just by the symptoms studying the medicines so we have to know that what is the important of studying the allied subjects definitely a very very great uh, uh, diagnosis and effort done by you right so now i would like to tell you about uh, we, through oih our mode of uh, method of teaching would be to bring all of you under one roof where we can tell you what is the uh, significance of studying the allied subjects and how we should go ahead with the homeopathic cases so um, last month we had done with our first course which was based on uh, the uh, pcos so now we are coming across with another uh, session another uh, certificate course online certificate course that will be based on skin diseases and i would like to tell you some uh, little details about this it will be a uh, not a weekly course it will be not every day course it will be like a weekly course every fridays we'll be having the classes classes will be there for 12 weeks on all the fridays most likely if there is no change and the major key features of this uh, uh, of of this would be uh, that we will be bringing few of uh, few of our very renowned uh, faculty members who will be telling us about the physiology of the skin pathology of the skin diseases better understanding of differential diagnosis what should be the homeopathic approach on treating skin diseases what is the benefit of proper case taking and how the proper repertorization and miasmatic approach has to be taken like dr deepak said that we should understand the differences between very similar words which we have like condylometa and uh, what what is the major difference like this many other things will be taught during the session which will definitely help you getting benefit in treating the patients which you come across so there will be uh, recordings available of the lectures for next one month for those who join the session and uh, after completion of the course as many of you would have seen that uh, we had given the certificate through oih which you can uh, really benefit through the sessions in your day to day practice yeah so now i would like to so, thank uh, uh, thank you dr silpi and we will share all the details of this course very soon and uh, you can also register on uh, our website orbitclinics.com so uh, we invite you everyone and we also share your certificates uh, uh, of this webinar so dr shanvi please continue yes sir so i would like to thank all of you our participants as well as our speaker for this wonderful session 
and uh, i like to request dr shilpi to present all the certificate to the participants as well as our speaker yes. sure. this is a certificate that is provided by oih dr shilpi the please proceed for this yeah this is like to all the participants who are there i'm really thankful and grateful that you all were patiently listening showing your interest so we had uh, dr um, abhishek dukkal dr akanksha chauhan for your uh, kind support and being with us during this session this is a certificate for you dr akanksha sharma dr uh, animesh semwal thank you for coming and joining the session dr anisha chaurasia thanks a lot and all the best dr aparna uh, arpana soni thanks a lot for joining dr ashish uh, tak dr ashok madan uh, this is for dr baljeet kaur dr deepak gautam dr dilpreet singh dr divya gupta dr garima jindal dr hensi malde dr fanish shake dr jp gaur dr jyoti dr lalita bhati dr mala sharma dr mansi malde dr mohammad mazammil dr nupur kumari dr pramod tiwari dr pratyushi bansal dr preeti gar dr priyanka goswami dr r kant dr s uh, vasan and uh, last but not the least to our speaker dr sandeep tithoria and dr shanvi yadav dr shivangini dr shweta singh dr urvi uh, gudak gutka yes sir dr shweta yeah thank you all for such a wonderful participation looking forward for all of you to join more sessions from uh, our orbit institute of uh, applied homeopathy please take benefit of the sessions which we are giving you you will definitely never get disappointed thank you dr shanvi you want to say something thank you ma'am thank you sir and thanks to all the participants we are looking forward for all of you for our next sessions and you will definitely if you want to provide some suggestions to us you can write over our mail or you can write over our website all your suggestion will be addressed we will definitely uh, solve all your queries regarding anything about homeopathy or about skin diseases and last session was on pcos and uh, for that also you can consult our orbit clinic team anytime 
for discussing your cases for taking any help from our team thank you so much thank you thank you everyone yeah thank you everyone